the reaction that you had to these findings um, in the what you might call the development community or in the, in, in the prof you know the uh, the development profession was not exactly enthusiastic. I mean, it was a combination of initial denial that, about the, the facts of the matter, a reluctance to even believe that this yeah. sector was anything like as large as you discovered it to be. But then after that, a tendency, I think, as you're describing the book, to dismiss the phenomenon as a, as a, uh, as a, as a failure, as something that needs to be remedied rather than uh, recognized and perhaps, I think, celebrated, which would be more your, mm. uh, your view. What's your, what's your view of that? I mean, how disappointed, how surprised were you by that reaction? Do you find that you can understand it and have some sympathy with it, or does it make you angry? Mm. I, I think all of the above, really. You know, I mean, I was, I was very surprised. As I say, I, I was excited to buy what I found, then getting sort of stonewalled by the, the development experts um, was, was, was disturbing. And, and it really was a denial. You know, it really was, Tudor, you may have found something in one place in you know, maybe the old city of Hyderabad. It is not anywhere else. And then when I found it somewhere else, well, it's not anywhere else. You know. Then I found it somewhere else. It was certainly not in country X. Go to country X. It is there. You know. Then once the denial was there, people now accept these schools are there. And, and um, for example, UNESCO's report on education for all, um, their global monitoring report on education for all last year, has got a whole section now on what they call low-fee private schools. So they're now on the agenda. But the subtitle there was low-fee private schools, symptom of state failure. Right. So it's not something to be celebrated in its own right. It's not about the poor helping themselves. It's about a problem with the real system, government schools. But, but you asked me in a sort of personal, you know, what, do I understand it? I suppose I do understand it. I mean, you know, imagine putting yourself in the same position. You know. um, imagine you had been working 30 years of your life, 40 years of your life, in development, you've been pursuing a particular system, and you've been very successful. You've found, you channeled billions, if not trillions, of dollars into that system, you know, through your own work and the government system. And you know, it wasn't, it's not working great, but at least you feel you're on some mission. You know, people gen generally you're doing are good, trying to yeah. do good, aren't they? And then some, you know, some squirt comes along and says, "Well, actually, you're barking the wrong tree. I'm afraid you're backing the wrong horse. Haven't you seen what the poor?" Are you know, the decisions the poor are making for themselves are not the decisions you're imposing on them. And I, I guess it would be hard. You know, I'm, I'm not trying to be patronizing. I'm really, I'm saying, you know, it, it is, a, it is, it's hard to suddenly say, well, everything I've believed in all my life is not true anymore. Um, particularly when, you know, no one thought these schools were there. So I do understand it. Okay. Yeah, I do. Well, let me try and play uh, devil's advocate mm. for a moment mm. and put to you some of the arguments that, uh, that the skeptics have, I think, about your findings. Let's start with the one you just mentioned. You know, uh, low-cost private schools, symptom of state failure. Actually, what's wrong, what's wrong with that? I mean, it is a symptom of state failure. It might be, it might be an adequate remedy, mm. um, but, but the schools are there be, precisely because the state schools aren't very good. Isn't, isn't that right? That, that's one possible interpretation. But... Another interpretation is a bit like you asked about the, the title of the book in the first place. If, if state education, if public education is the correct way of doing things and everything else is an aberration, then obviously, in some sense, the poor abandoning public education and going to private schools is a symptom of state failure. But if public education has been something, an, a model of it, an experimental model, which has been tried in America and Britain and there, therefore exported, well, tried in Britain and therefore exported throughout the world, um, and it's not working, and it's not an appropriate system to poor countries, and it's not, it, it's not even necessary, because there are entrepreneurs who want to create their own, own schools, and they satisfy the educational need. If you look at it that way, then you say, it's not a symptom of state failure, it's a symptom of entrepreneurial, you know, human ingenuity success. Right. I think that's the way I would, I would, and that's the way I prefer to look at it. I'm, I'm happy with people saying it's state failure, and I'm happy with the development community if they want to put their billions into state schools. Well, you know, let them get on with it. You know, who's to say they might work, you know, one day. 